Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tell Your Story. I'm your host, Todd Nesloni, and each week I look to bring you a different guest who has encouraged, inspired, or challenged me in one way or another and bring them on to share some of their story in hopes that it inspires you to tell some of yours. I am so thrilled for this week to have my friend Liz Garden on with me. Liz, thanks for being here. Tell everybody who you are. Hi, everybody. Um, <laughs> I am Liz Garden, and um, let's see, who am I? I'm a principal of a kindergarten through fifth grade uh, school in Massachusetts. Um, I'm in Holden, Massachusetts, just outside of Worcester. And um, I am also um, a mom to uh, a five-year-old feisty kindergarten. Actually, no, sorry, she's six. She just turned six this month. Um, a six-year-old feisty kindergartner and a six-year-old feisty first grader who um, is, I'm a foster mom as well. So I have a foster son. Um, and I am, I'm a mom. I'm a educator. I'm a principal. Um, and I'm a reading addict. <laughs> I love it. Well, we got lots to talk about. Well, Liz, you know, anytime I have these questions with people, I, I do always start with the same question. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, as kids, we are growing up dreaming what we're going to be when we get older. And so does what you dreamed as a kid align at all with what you're doing now? Actually, no. Um, and I, I watch your show all the time and I'm like, people are always like, yes, it does. And I'm like, uh, no, um, I, you know, I, when I was younger, um, I wanted to be a doctor. Um, mm -hmm. I loved anatomy and the study of anatomy. And I went to school and I was a double major in English and biology. And, and then I started thinking like, Hmm, but I really just like anatomy. I don't think I want to be a doctor. <laughs> um, and but my mom was a um, Latin teacher, like a uh -huh. career changer Latin teacher, and my dad was the president of a hospital. So I think that's where like the you know thing. Yeah, yeah. But um, I ended up, you know, um, graduating not knowing what I wanted to do. And um, I thought, <laughs> what what happened? So I literally opened up a newspaper and kind of said like, hmm, this looks like a good job to apply for. And it was a paraprofessional in a, a private school for um, children with language-based learning disabilities. And I said, I could do that job. And I interviewed and they said, you know, you have the least amount of um, experience of anybody that we've interviewed, but I don't know, there's something about you that we right. think that like you're the one for the job. <laughs> and um, they hired me. And then the teacher I was working with, um, she uh, turned out she was pregnant and uh -huh. she had to be on bed rest. So then they said, you know, we could hire a sub, but we think we're going to just make you the teacher. And I, you know, I was like 22. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, and I, that first year was like trial by fire. You know, I was um, writing IEPs. Um, I was, I had kids um, from with all sorts of different um, disabilities and learning needs. And I actually even set, told the director that I didn't like what the art teacher was doing. So I took over as the art teacher. Um, and in one year, I feel like I learned so much yeah. and I go still go back to that year. But, um, but then it was like, after that year, I knew this is what I was supposed to do. I'm supposed to work with kids. Um, and, you know, so that I kind of never looked back after that, but I you know, never. And I love, I love the, I love those journeys even more when you see somebody who falls into something they weren't mm -hmm. expecting to fall into, but then sees that I was meant to do this. Like mm -hmm. I love this, and you know, yeah. at some point though, Liz, in the midst of you working with the students and being in the classroom, you kind of get that itch to maybe try some of the campus leadership roles, like a principal or things like that. When did you realize that that was going to be a, a step in in the direction for you? So also something that I told people, I will never be a principal. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> and uh, here I am. Um, no, so I was, um, I think I was teaching second grade um, and I and I had taught all different, I had taught high school, middle school, preschool. Um, and I ended up in second grade, which I definitely loved. Um, and I was, I kind of became the person in the building where all the other teachers would say, you go talk to the principal about blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, fine. And so when that was happening, um, I also thought, well, I should get my, you know, administration degree just to have it down the road. Yeah. Um, so I went through all that, did the program. 
And at the time in my life, um, you know, it just happened to be, unfortunately, life happens. Um, I was going through a very bad divorce and um, I, you know, all of a sudden woke up one day and I was like, um, okay, I'm, I'm having to start over with my life right. here. Um, maybe I should do something with this degree I just got and, you know, maybe I should just apply and see what happens. Yeah. And I was, I took a road trip with my mom um, that I, I'm so grateful that I got to do that where one summer we just drove cross country for the whole month of July. Oh, so awesome. And I, yes, it's, I'm really glad I did that, but I left, I literally left the East coast with um, one last name <laughs> and one job. And I returned to the East Coast after making it to the West Coast with a different last name and a new job. Um, I did a, a phone interview um, and I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And the superintendent called me and said, you know, we want to interview you. And I was like, okay, but I mean, I, I won't make it, you know, back to Massachusetts tomorrow. So we go on the phone and she said, sure. And, um, we interviewed. And then I, I also said, you know, just so you know, I, I, I write a blog. So if you want to see my writing and know more about me, I'm, I'm doing a travel blog for my students while I'm on this trip. And so, you know, I said, you can check that out too. And, um, we left Santa Fe. I did the interview. We left Santa Fe, drove to the Grand Canyon and stayed at Lucky Lane on Lucky Lane in uh, Arizona. And um, they called me and they were like, we want to offer you a job. And I literally, I think I said to the superintendent, are you for real? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, um, yeah, I was like, you've never met me, you know? Uh -huh. Okay. And she, I was hired as a um, early childhood assistant principal and, you know, came back and started the job and, you know, and, and again, though, once I got into it, I, I was like, why did I ever say I never wanted to do this? Because, yeah. you know, now, like, I mean, I've been an administrator for, I think like 13 or 14 years now. And, you know, I feel like this is what I was meant to do. Um, you know, I was meant to, to help, um, the educators in the building and the students in the building in this, in this capacity. I love that so much. And, you know, one thing I kind of want to switch gears a little bit and talk about too, is something that you said at the beginning of the episode is that you are also a foster mom. Mm -hmm. And that has always been something that has been really near to my heart. And, and when I, I have so many different friends and, and, and people who have done that in their own life and talk about how rewarding it is. And so where did that come into you deciding that that was something you were going to be a part of it also? Yeah. So, you know, um, I, um, because like, as I mentioned, I, I was divorced and I, you know, um, ended up re, you know, remarrying and I met, you know, a man who, you know, swept me off my feet. He's totally different from the first person I married, but <laughs> he's a great guy. He's a musician. He's just the kindest person on the planet. Aww. And, you know, but so it was a uh, kind of a second start at, at, at romance. Um, and when, um, you know, when we met, I was like, well, I still like, I, you know, I do want to have children. I mean, yeah. that's like important to me, but, um, I was older. Um, and, um, we struggled, we really struggled mm -hmm. with, um, having a child and, um, at going through that process, we had said though, well, if it doesn't work out, you know, like this is something that I felt like as a administrator in my previous school, I had been approached a couple times with some of my own students of, you know, like, mm -hmm. would you consider taking them in? And, and, right. you know, we had that conversation and I, you know, we were ready to say like, Yes, you know what, like yeah. we're ready to do that. And um, we started the whole process of, you know, you have to, it's kind of funny when you have to go to like parenting classes. <laughs> okay. Um, because what happened was at the same time that we were going through that, um, I got pregnant. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and, you know, it was like a, we were going to try one more time of uh, like, you know, infertility and, the insurance screwed up and we took a month off and then somehow I got pregnant. And the <laughs> worker, I remember when she called me, she was like, I thought you couldn't, that couldn't happen. I was like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, let's put this on hold, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, so after my daughter was born and um, uh, after, by the time she turned four, I think we kind of said, um, you know, I said to my husband, like, I think, you know, our, this is what we wanted to do anyways. Like there's just so many kids that need, you know, need, um, someone to love them <laughs> and, um, we, you know, that should be us. And so we, we said, okay, let's start the process back up. And, um, we really, you know, we did our 
more of our parenting classes, which is again, it's very funny to be a parent and take a parenting class. I bet, I bet. <laughs> but, um, and then we, um, you know, we were certified to be foster parents and um, two Thanksgivings ago, I think like, it was like actually like two days after Thanksgiving, this four-year-old little boy um, was dropped off um, on our steps on a Friday night. I'll never forget it. It was the weirdest thing. Um, and I had a school event. So I was like, okay, guys, like my daughter and him, I'm like, we're going to go do bingo night at my school. So <laughs> me. I mean, and, um, you know, then it was just, it was going to be a temporary thing. And, yeah. you know, over two years later, and now we're in the process of hopefully um, adopting him. Um, well, I love, I love that they're so close to the same age. Um, and, and you know, it's so funny that you share the story of, you know, all of a sudden it's just, it's there because one of my good friends who did foster as well, he was like, yeah, we went through the whole process and they were like, it could take up to a year. And he's like, the day we got cleared mm -hmm. was the day they brought one over because yeah. they're like, it just happened. And he was yeah. like, we were like, what? We were thinking like a year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, I mean, and I, I will still, I will forever remember that night. I mean, it was, it was both amazing and it was also heartbreaking and, and being a parent myself, you know, and having a child the exact same age, you know, I said to my husband that, I mean, I sobbed that night because he was crying in the middle of the night, you know, and you're not, you know, it's very awkward and, yeah, and yeah. you have a four-year-old who has been taken away from, you know, his parents, his sister, he does have a sister. And, and, um, you know, I, I said, it, I can't, imagine like our child you know being put into i mean we're strangers yeah. I mean, we're strangers yeah. to, this, to this child but um you know but i mean now like he's part of our family mm -hmm. um and um he's just an amazing kid and it is funny because i had actually said i think i would prefer to have a child younger than my daughter just to make mm -hmm. it easier and so i was like oh good same age so you know everywhere we go they're like are they twins and i'm yeah. like well, no but you know like um and they they are like twins in the fact that they you know they bicker they play mm -hmm. together they love yeah. each other they hate each other they you know they they plot against me together, you know, um, they're, they're, they're like that. So it's, it's good. <laughs> well, I've got a question, you know, because I think, you know, when I hear about this, you know, a lot of people heard of adoption, a lot of people heard of fostering. Um, and you know, one of the things that I think would be the hardest on me personally is fostering a child like different than adoption, adoption, you adopt them, they become yours. Yeah. Fostering they're yours, but it's, it's, ideally in in the hopes of the family temporary that they get mm -hmm. them back yeah. but that's not always the case and i just feel like i would get so emotionally attached i it, wouldn't be able to let them go back yeah so it, how I mean, do you like prepare it is, yourself it is very it, i don't know if there is a preparation for it because so we um because actually the the child that we have he did actually um so we he came to us in a no, in the month of november mm -hmm. and then by march allegedly he was he was set to go back to right. be with mom and he did go back and um there was a a program that they were able to live with her in a right. specific place and you know so we were like okay and um you know we had had christmas with him we had had you know a couple different holidays and but we you know we said goodbye and it was like okay we're and trying to explain that to my daughter like mm -hmm. oh you know, so, and it was actually, it had been about three weeks that he had been away from us. And, um, we, and my daughter had said, you know, can we, what can we do? Can we, and I said, well, we can't call him, but you know, I had told her, I said, let's write him a letter. Cause you know, yeah. I just said, well, I'll get him a letter. And we were in the process of doing that. And that's when the, the emergency hotline called me and said, you know what? he's been removed again. Can he please come back to you? And I was like, absolutely. But right. so we did like experience that initially. And then in the meantime, we also, we are kind of registered to be um, respite care for babies, for infants. So okay. <laughs> that is really hard. So we yeah. take in, we will take in like a, you know, a two month old for like a week. And, wow. um, and at first, my, my husband is like, God love him. Cause he's like, are you crazy? <laughs> 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 and, but, you know, in my mind, like the, like the first time that we had a child for like one night, you know, and it was like, oh, this little infant and, you know, we're just loving on them. And then, but then, you know, we give them back because mm -hmm. the grandparents come forward or whatever. And, you know, at first I was like this, I don't think I can do this. But then I told myself, and this is what I say is that, you know, 
But for, for that one night, whether it's like for a night or a week or a month, you know, mm -hmm. like I gave that child that love that they needed. And, you know, um, then that's, that's what that, then I was doing what I, you know, have signed up to do. And, you know, I had an impact on their life, even if it was for that short amount of time, because it is hard. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know how I would be if like, if we weren't in the process now with our own foster son, like, because I know we're in the adoption phase and it's, it's a long phase. Yeah. Um, but and it's even hard for because to hear because he'll say, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not a garden, you know, and I'm like, but you are like you are, right. you know, but, you know, in his mind, he's like, well, yeah. I have the last name and like, you know, you aren't my mom. I mean, he doesn't call me mom. He he mistakenly calls me mom a lot. Of times. <laughs> you know, I miss Liz, you know, and uh -huh. and but he tells me he loves me, you know, but it is it is hard. I mean, it's it is it's not probably for everybody right. because um you know, you do, you have to kind of be a little hardened in that, that mm -hmm. like, you, you, you might not, but again, I feel like the fact that like, what helps me is knowing that, okay, even if it's for one night, I've helped a child that, you know, would not have had a home or, right. you know, a roof over their head or someone hugging them. <laughs> um, that's what I love about about the families that are able to do this is that exactly like what you said for for that chapter of their story you can at least know they were loved mm -hmm. and they had somewhere to go that was safe people who were taking care of them mm -hmm. and so I think you know and like you said you, you I I can just imagine the emotional toll but and it, but it's balanced by knowing that you're doing good for this child it's not mm -hmm. like you messed them up and now they take them right, away right. it's you were doing good to help. And that was what your role was in being right. a foster parent was to be that intermediary who was helping and everything like that. So it's a little funny that. that like I'm raising a child who my daughter who she'll be like, Mom, when we get another baby, you know, like, <laughs> like, like we don't just like get a baby. Like, you know, they just like, right. well, they just show up at our doors. I mean, like, you know, it'd be like, Oh, you know, here's another kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm I like, it doesn't work that way normally. <laughs> I love that. Well, Liz, I have so enjoyed this conversation. And one way that I always love to wrap these up is, you know, I believe as people, there's so many things we hold close to our hearts and who we are deep down. And so for anybody listening or watching today, if they walk away with one thing, what is your one thing for them? Ooh, well, I think probably the thing that mm, I say all the time to people is, um, you know, my one thing is um, always um, you need to be you. Um, you know, like, uh, you, like I am who I am and, you know, I am crazy that I do multiple things like foster kids and, you know, uh, am a principal and do a lot of other stuff, but, you know, I'm being me and, and who I am. Um, and you, you can't let people change who you are. Um, and you should be proud of who you are and what you do. I mean, I, I think about, um, my husband, you know, before I took this job where I am now, I was doing some interviews and I have, you can't quite see it anymore right now, but normally I have pink in my hair. Right. <laughs> and, um, and that's in honor of my mom who's a breast cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. And, but I was going for an interview and he's like, are you going to let them see your pink hair? And I was like, what do you mean? And, and I don't even think about that. And, yeah. he, and I said, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, well, what if they're, you know, like, what if that district isn't, you know, that's not cool with them. And I'm like, well, then, then, then I'm not cool for them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's me. And like, that has nothing to do with how I am as an administrator, but because I'm always just going to be me, I'm not going to change um, to fit somebody else's mold. And so I think that's my advice to people always is just, you know, you got to be you like, that's the only the best person you can be is be you. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Liz, for coming on today. I've so enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for listening or watching another episode of Tell Your Story. Remember, you can check out past episodes on any of your favorite podcast stations or YouTube. I hope today's conversation with Liz has encouraged you to get out there and tell your story because every story matters.